Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Great. Long time. Going good. <laughs> just a little bright. I'm just wondering if I should turn it around. Ooh, your makeup looks pretty today. Thank you. Did you do a little something different for the eye? Not really. Yeah. Oh, a little bit thicker. Did you, are you going live on your Facebook? Sure. Yeah. Good idea. We'll do it. Because when you do, I'll I'll go ahead and do a watch party. Okay. Is this okay? This view, just with the sun in the behind me. Um, I'm going live, but let me just hold on. What view? That one. You're good there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be right back. Did um one quick step. Well, there's that handsome fella is. Hey, Mary Beth. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Good, good. Very good. good. Cannot complain. We are doing the right things. And keeping a schedule, keeping us active. Leading. Encouraging. Hey, Julie, how are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Good. Get everybody healthy, happy. Yeah, yeah, we are. We are a little unhappy about uh, some things, but you know that's what's going on right now. Sure. We got but, our daughter. We got our daughter out of New York City. Good. Uh, when they shut down NYU, we said, "Okay, you're going to be online. Why don't you just come and stay with us?" So she flew down. Good. So I've got my oldest son and my grandson and my youngest daughter. We're all seeing each other together. Oh, well, that's nice that's that you get that time together. Yeah. And then my uh, my youngest son, my baby, he's in. Uh, he was actually on spring break uh, in San Francisco from college, and then he flew down to L.A. to see his girlfriend um, before he came back, and uh, he ended up getting stuck there. So he's been there the whole time. Oh, wow. How convenient. Yeah, with his girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> in San Francisco. Yeah. Ordering <laughs> dinner in all the time and uh, you know, ordering a case of wine. Uh, so, you know, tough, tough, tough for him. And where are you and Rebecca right now? Florida? Yeah, I'm sitting here in my, uh, my home, sitting downstairs, staring out at the lake. Nice. Yeah, Love it is it. nice. Good. Great. Well, my husband um, says. Oh, you gotta oh, take you gotta take your background off so that we. Can yeah, I know, see it. I know. I've just went crazy. <laughs> you're in the swamp, man. You're the swamp man right now. No, that's that's the road out to my house. Oh, okay. Wow. That's what it looks like where, where I live. Everybody thinks Florida looks a certain way. Where I live, it does not look like Florida. No, no, that looks like New England. Yeah, huge trees, oaks, hickories, maples, pretty. You're in North Florida, right? Very North, very North, yeah. Georgia is 50 minutes from my front door. Awesome. All right. And my beach house is 50 minutes from my front door. <laughs> That's nice, too. So, anything I need to know before we go on? No. Um, no? We've been, um, our audience has been anyone from agents to leaders. It first started with our region, and now it's, gone all over i even i have we have south africa people who watch it um later while we're sleeping and i get comments and emails from them as well so cool um the replays are definitely as active as what we get on um live and mary beth i'm live so if you want to start your watch party feel free so it, it's been a it's been a good experience and you know i i have to say and while we know this, but everyone's so generous with their time and availability and willing to 
come on and share um, their insights and advice with people. It just reinforces who we are at KW. Yeah, we're all in this together. Yeah, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. All right. All right, Mary Beth, you ready? You wanna, um, you wanna- Bring them in, you wanna bring them in? You wanna go? <laughs> all right, let's do it. Well, I had a few nice words to say about our friend and our um, and our guest today, and I had to think about what Gene Rivers really means to me. And I, I have to say, you, husband, father, grandfather, KW master faculty, international speaker, mega agent, team owner, multiple market center owner, real estate investor, coach, talent finder, lead generator downright honest and awesome and a tell it how you are kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I love you. I'm proud to say that you've been a mentor of mine over the last 16 years and we're really proud to have you today. So thank, thank you. you. That's very sweet. It made me tired just hearing you say that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You got a lot of great attributes. Definitely. So if we could just um, if we could just jump right in because we have a lot of questions sure. and I know we're going to get a good feel of who Gene is and, and what you've been through and I think we asked you to come here because we know that you've been through a couple different markets and you and Rebecca have rebuilt and built and you love on your people. And one thing I can say is that your people love you. So it's an honest um, you know, relationship there. So you own a highly successful real estate team, multiple businesses. Would it be fair to say that you've seen your fair share of market disruptors on your journey? And would you share a little bit about your story with us? Sure. I think, uh, I think what Gary's been telling all of us for a long time is the absolute truth, which is markets go up, markets go down. And if you're, if you're a Pollyanna person, you, you'll hate it. But if you're a realist person, you see them coming. And he's been telling us this shift was coming for four years now because it was literally overdue. And now all of a sudden it's here. And a lot of times shifts do feel sudden, uh, but we've been right for one for a while. Uh, but yeah, uh, we lost everything in Hurricane Andrew, and then we had the dot-com bust on Wall Street in 98, 99, 2000, and then we had, of course, 9-11 happened, and we had two other hurricanes, and we had the collapse in 08. Oh my gosh, it never seems to stop. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been doing this, Gene? 31 years. Hmm. 31 years. Uh, the truth about all of that, though, and this is this is really where agents have to get their head on straight, is that... In, in reversals, in recessions, uh, that is where you take market share. It doesn't mean you do more business than you did in a good year, but it does mean when the market recovers, you will do way more business than you did your last good year. And that literally has been our story. Uh, and it's not just my story, it's Keller Williams' story. Keller Williams had its greatest growth during the economic collapse. When all the other companies were shrinking, we were booming because we had the answers, and it's the same thing today. That's when we came out with the shift book. We had the profit camp tour for market center business owners. We had mindset. We had team one. We had a lot of stuff that hit uh, the marketplace to help our agents improve and grow, even though times were tough. And it's the same thing right now. You're a part of that. You're doing this, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're actually, and even my market center, Matt Bilheimer and I, every day we get on at 11, we just finished shift after the first three weeks and we're gonna shift into uh, MREA and start just going to foundational models. Yeah. I mean, it's all yeah. we can do is go back to the models, go back to the foundational models. Yep. Yeah. Great. Um, Gene, so what we're going, to, going through today is environmental, which ultimately then affects the economy versus what happened in 2008, which was completely driven by a breakdown in our economy and, and our lending. Based on what you're seeing, how, how do the markets compare? Like, how are they similar? How are they different? And what must agents do differently than they may have done in the 2008 market to get ahead? Yeah, well, um, this, this is not, um, in a big picture, this is not really different because what happens, no matter whether it's a, an epidemic or it's a hurricane, which can be localized, although we've had some hurricanes and not only hit Florida, it kept going and hit New Jersey, New York, right? So these can be large scale, uh, but episodic in a sense, right? 
uh, but what comes after them is economic change. So the, the reality is the, the collapse of the real estate industry precipitated the economic collapse. So there's always a precipitating factor that pulls the trigger and then, then it happens. So uh, the reality is, is this, we have this wave going over us right now at the moment that is the coronavirus, COVID-19. This wave is, has got all of us in its grasp and we have to uh, honor that, meaning if we don't honor that, it'll kill us, literally. So we have to pay attention to the, the dangers of this virus and that's shutting down all businesses, all ballparks, all, I mean, you know the deal. Mm -hmm. shut it all down and then this will pass because if you look back through the history of epidemics they actually all hit and all have a lifespan and the average i look back to 1918 all the way up you know the ebola the swine flu the avian flu we this is not news we've had these before the average lifespan of an epidemic like that a worldwide is about seven months seven months so if you look at the Hunan province in China, it started in December, it is now April, it's five months later, and they have taken down the temporary hospitals, they're removing the road barricades, they're quote, back open, although people are still wearing masks because there's still danger, but they're kind of coming out of it economically now. So it took five months before they could kind of come out economically. That's the discussion we're having right now. The governors of the New England states and the governors on the West Coast states are all talking about what's it look like when we start coming out of it. So they see the light at the end of the tunnel, right? Here's the problem. That wave, when that wave is finally receding, then we're gonna deal with the second wave, which is what you were talking about, which is the economic damage wave. How much damage was done to the economy? And what, is that, what does that look like? Uh, the evidence seems to be there's two to four months of, of economic damage for each damage of the virus. So if we're, we started in January, I don't think we're going to be out of this in April or May. We may be out in June, but let's just say it's six months. If six months, the entire nation, new cases are radically declining, deaths are radically declining, we'll probably look like Hunan, and they're already talking about it now. Maybe you get to go back to a restaurant, but it's only 50% capacity and you see only seat at every other table, that kind of thing. But if that happens, that's six months times four, that's 24 months of two years of economic recovery time minimum that'll be necessary to come out. Now here's the point, here's where they're all similar. Underneath all of that, underneath the virus wave right now and underneath the economic wave that's coming after that, the negative wave, People will be buying and selling houses. <laughs> they will be buying and selling houses. They bought houses at 18%. They sold houses and brought $50,000 to the closing table, right? Crying, but they still sold it, right? Yeah. They sold them short sale, right? Lost their credit. People bought houses and sold houses in every crash that I've seen. We just went through one this, that was localized in the Panama City market a year and five months ago, Hurricane Michael slammed into Mexico Beach, tore out Panama City, that market was devastated and people were buying houses that were half destroyed with the intention of fixing them up and then selling them again, right? Yep. So people will buy and sell real estate for a simple fact, they all use the product. It's not an option. It's not an option. And it's like food, right? What's open today? In every market, even ones that are totally shut down, grocery, grocery stores. stores. Yep. Grocery stores are open. And in most states, not all, but in most states, real estate is also open. In other words, it's considered an essential industry, just like the grocery store, right? So mm -hmm. whether your state is treating you like that or not, the fact is, even if the government says, and the government's doing this in Pennsylvania and Manhattan, right? They're saying, no real estate. Guess what? Mm -hmm. Listings are popping up every day in the MLS. Contracts are pending on property every day in the MLS. Nobody's showing property, and yet property is popping up because it's all being done digitally. And that's the agent's deal right now. They've got to understand that because people will buy and sell real estate, no matter what's going on, there's always a deal out there. What are you willing to do in terms of changing your actions and your behaviors in order to find and be a part of that movement? 
it's a smaller opportunity, but for a single agent or a team, it's still plenty of business out there. Right. Yeah. So talk, talk a little bit about that because you've seen these shifts, you've seen the agents that have come out of it and then thrived, kept their career. But I'm sure you've also seen the agent that got eaten up by this and went bye bye with the market centers. Right. So and on the team, I'm sure. Um, what was the differentiating factor? What did the ones that survive and thrive did versus the ones that had to get out? Well, it's always mindset. It always starts with mindset. That's what starts the shift book, right? Mindset, mindset, yep. get your head on straight. People are going to be buying and selling houses. You know, the best year we ever had recorded ever to this day was in 05 when there were 7.2 million housing units sold. And then the worst year since the best year, and it is still the worst year after the best year ever, uh, was in 08, 09. And we went down to 4.2 million 2. properties. But that was still 4.2 million properties. And, yeah. and since, since 09, we've been hovering under 5 million. And a lot of us have made a lot of money when it's only been 4.7, 4.8 million housing units. And the reason it hadn't gone any higher is because new construction died in the collapse and has never gotten back on its feet again. I mean, you hear that? So the resale industry is actually very healthy right now. And remember, we went into this in the entire country with a lot of shortages of inventory. And when we come out of the, of the uh, virus wave, when that's over, we're going to wake up and discover we still have shortages of inventory. So okay. a lot of people are worried about what's going to happen to the house prices. Nothing, nothing, <laughs> because it's supply and demand, right? And the only thing that's going to happen right now is some buyers are not going to buy. And when they do hit the market to buy, there'll be more buyers and we're still dealing with shortages of inventory. I don't see the reality of much erosion in pricing. And if you look at Gary's charts from Reunion and they looked at the chart of housing affordability, we actually are at a very, right before the virus hit, we're at a very favorable affordability rating. We were, in the, we were at about 20% of household income to afford the average house in America. In the collapse, it was 38%. We were well yeah. over the standard one third of household income, right? Yep. So, mm -hmm. so housing affordability was essentially fine when we went into this. Uh, inventory was short supply when we went into this and coming out of it, those two things are gonna basically be untouched unless something really bad happens to also interrupt our economy. In other words, if another problem happens. Sure. And to, to your point, though, um, maybe we could share some of those slides because uh, what Gene, you're talking about is our vision speech, or I don't know how he's packaged it in the last couple of years. Maybe it's state of our market or company. Um, those slides I've always used in my career just to show, give buyers and sellers perspective on where the market has been over a course of 20 years, not just what they're looking at right now. Yep. Very bad. Um, some was, um, Somebody had asked me for those slides just a couple of days ago, so I went ahead and posted it to our uh, Leading Through Crisis um, Facebook group. So if anybody's on the chat that wants to revisit uh, Gary's vision, all of the slides are on our Facebook group in files, and um, we'll go ahead and pick out those few affordability ones and, and highlight those a little later today too. But you're absolutely okay. right, I mean, when, when we leave family reunion, what we should be doing, right, is, and now again, I would think, is taking th those slides, especially, and, and bringing it hyper-local to where we are in our town so we know how to adapt and, and really ha who to go after, um, especially the ones when it talks about buyers and sellers and where they're coming from. Is that mm -hmm. something that you do, Dean? With your people? Uh, yeah, but right now, I mean, you asked earlier, you asked about what should agents be thinking about right now and, and surviving this. Um, the, the reality is uh, what I hear a lot of people saying now is, is we have a new normal. Mm -hmm. And I, I really don't like that because the, remember, there's two waves. And this way we're in right now, it's got to last another two, three, four months. And people want to buy or sell real estate. Remember, for a lot of us, this is actually prime time. A whole lot of people, if you look at the hard numbers, there's at least a million five to two million people that we're going to be moving in the next quarter. You know, they're going to be putting their homes up for sale, buying homes and moving. Our two-week quarters, right? 
four million, uh, I'm sorry, five million for the year is what we were gonna get. A good mm -hmm. two to three million of them are gonna move in the middle two quarters. So That's next great. quarter, this quarter, we're gonna have a million and a half. And now they're sitting back going, oh my God, what are we gonna do? Can we still mm -hmm. do it? What are we gonna do? And some are gonna do it. Some are gonna say, doggone it, we got three kids in a two bedroom house, we're moving. I don't care about the dang virus. <laughs> some of them are getting a divorce and they're gonna sell. Some of them are lost their jobs, right? Right, some are having, some are having, I hate to say it, but some are having job loss and some are gonna right. have to sell, right? Mm -hmm. So people are gonna need to buy and sell real estate. So. Here's the point. This way, you've got another three or four months where the way you do business is not the way you're going to do business coming out of this way. Because right now, we all started in January and we had to do our business like this, mm -hmm. right? We, I mean, not had to, we were doing business like this. And all of a sudden, three months later, we're all over here. We're all digital or we're doing nothing, right? You're all online and on the telephone and that's how you're doing business or you're doing nothing. Now in three or four months, five months maybe, you're gonna you're you're not going back to this you're going to go back to this mm -hmm. because what's going to happen is number one the consumer is gonna some consumers are going to appreciate and actually like the digital experience they're going to like the digital consultation mm -hmm. uh they're going to find it's easier they're going to find it's more convenient and they're going to find it's more efficient and agents are going to find this is really cool because the research so far, and this is not a lot of research, but the research right now is saying the digital consultation ends up being shorter, shorter than the at the conference table. And it also has higher conversion rates. Now imagine that if it takes less time and you have more clients coming out of it, why would an agent want to go back to the conference table? And yet there's still going to be some consumers who want the face to face, who want the handhold who want you to walk through their home with them, right? Who want you to walk through 47 houses with them, right? Some are gonna want that and others aren't gonna, aren't gonna care about it. So you're gonna need to know how to do the full digital, but you're gonna need to be prepared to go back to some hand holding. So we're gonna be right here. So right now we're stuck in the digital world and this is temporary. This is not the new normal. The new normal is when we come out of this and we're permanently anchored much more as agents in the digital world, which is the command world, which is yeah. the video world, which yeah. is the world of presentations on Zoom and a real presentation where you know how to merge charts and graphs while mm -hmm. you're still talking to them and seeing them and you can gauge their behavior by watching them and do the close. This is gonna be the new world. That'll be the new normal where we're all digitally engaged and engaged with command on a high level. And that speaks to the market of the moment. Mm -hmm. Right now, a lot of agents are going, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And particularly new agents, right? Well, I, I just got my license. What am I going to do? Yeah. Well, the market of the moment right now is not the open house, which is classic for new agents, right? It's not door knocking, which is classic. The market of the moment right now is video and a new agent can do video. And most experienced agents are not doing video, weren't doing video. And this is where a new agent can wake up and go, you know what? Everybody's a new agent right now. Everybody's naive and doesn't quite know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And when you realize that, you have a big opportunity to jump out and whack the tar out of experienced agents because consumers only know what consumers see, right? And right now, right now, literally in your community, in my community, in all but six states in the nation, people are sitting at home. It's a work day and they're sitting at home and they're working, but they're also watching a lot of video. They're all on the internet like crazy. And we all know this is going on. Yeah. And if you, if you look at uh, YouTube, uh, three and a half weeks ago, YouTube came out and said, we are no longer capable due to the incredible volume. We're no longer capable of streaming high definition video. Yeah. The only thing we can do is standard definition. You take that little bit of data about there's that much uh, video being watched. And then you add to that what agents are saying about virtual open houses and the agents that are doing virtual open houses are reporting. They're not getting seven views. They're getting a hundred, 200, 300, I had Leslie Edwards, I think y'all know the Peters, uh, yep. Edwards, the Peters, Leslie Peters from the Peters team in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, they started doing these uh, uh, four weeks ago now, 
And I had Leslie on two weeks ago talking about, for my people, talking about how she approached it. And uh, the last one they did, she had two agents who each did one and she did one. And one of the agents had 300 and some odd, 340 people watching their virtual open house. The other one had 600 and some, and Leslie had over 2,000 people watching her video open house. Her, her you know, yep. her, her, her experience is unbelievable. But now I've discovered in the last two weeks, lots of people are getting massive amounts of viewership. Now, all that boils down to is this. Everybody's at home and everybody's watching video and everybody's searching on YouTube for real estate stuff. And if you're not popping up videos right now on YouTube and sending them out to your entire database and tell them, here's my new listing, take a walkthrough with me virtually, click here to see it. And if you wanna boost it to non-sphere, so if you're a new agent, you simply put it on YouTube, run it through command, get a $10 a week budget, that's it, you don't need many, for that video, and then you boost it on the areas or the zip codes or wherever you want the focused attention to be on that video, and you sit back and reel in the leads. And I mean it, you reel in the leads. Lead flow on that right now is running about $1.30 to $1.40 per lead. And there's no cheaper lead flow anywhere. So a new agent can jump into that game and beat the new agent, I mean the experienced pro, because they're not doing video. So here's the point, when Gary says repeatedly, top agents love recessions because that's when they take market share, this is how it's done. You realize where the market suddenly, suddenly the market goes whoop, and now it's over here. And then they'll jump in front of the market right there. And the big collapse in 06, 07, 08, the market suddenly went to short sale and REO. And the agents who didn't learn how to do shorts, I tried one and it was terrible. I hate those. I'm not going to do them. Well, guess what? They ran out of business. They yeah. I don't even, I don't even show business. short sales. What's some that? Of our agents do, I said some of our agents used to say, I don't even show short sales. And I, I'd be like, well, why not? That's right. And they it gave up market share to the agents the who were willing to. That's exactly right. So that's what a lot of top agents did. They either became REO agents or they focused on mastering short sales and then they took, took market share, right? So it's the same thing right now. Now, right now today from a time block point of view, I think the agents need to realize that last fall, you had people that were in your pipeline because they told you, as a matter of fact, yeah, we are thinking about selling and moving in the spring. Uh, we're gonna do it probably around April, but we're gonna get through the holidays and the cold weather. So like in April, we'll put our home up for sale. The yard will be pretty, and then we're gonna move by uh, you know June. So that's our plan. Well, lo and behold, here comes the virus. And you should be on the phone every morning at 8 a.m. calling your A's and your B's. So in March, that would have been March people and April people in your, in your pipeline. But today it would be your April people and your May people, and you're doing one thing, and that is you're closing out your pipeline. Meaning, Mary Beth, you told me last fall you didn't want to move till the spring, so I'm calling to follow up. It's April 1st, you said in April, are you and John still thinking about moving this month? Yes or no? And well, not crazy in this crazy virus time. Okay, great. So you're concerned about the virus? Great, so I wanna talk about that. If you're concerned about the virus or the economy, I wanna talk about that. And let's make sure that before you say no to moving, you know what you're saying no to, because this actually might be a really good time for you. So let's talk through that and let's find out what your issues are. Now, if you end up telling me, no, I still think we're just gonna wait, and uh, so wait, wait until the virus thing is passed, yes. Okay, so what does that look like to you? Will you be ready when they open up restaurants or do you want to wait until they open up the football stadium and fill it up? Well, tell me your trigger where you think you'll feel safe. Restaurants, restaurants. The restaurants, great. Uh -huh. So I'm going to put that down. So instead of being an April seller, May buyer, you're going to now maybe move to an August seller and a September buyer. Are you comfortable with that? Absolutely. As long as the restaurants are open. So now I'm actually building a new pipeline. So what you need to do, what the agents need to be doing right now is closing out their old pipeline. So the April people, are they gonna do it or not? And if yes, do it. And if not, move them, park them. 
And now the May people, you'll be talking to them too, because they're, they'll be getting more and more afraid as the virus continues to grow, people will have more fear and more, more doubt, right? But if you have answers, if you have answers for them, here's how you can be safe being a buyer or a seller in the world of the coronavirus. If you have answers, people calm down. And then you need to send them evidence. So every week, you need to send a real estate report card in your marketplace, in your marketplace. How many new listings, how many pendings, and how many closings every seven days? Because the one thing that people need to see more than anything is that real estate actually is being done. So if every week they get a message from you, last seven days, 117 new listings, uh, 97 pendings, and 111 people closed. And every week it's new business, new business. There's no longer a question of can I do it? The only question is, okay, so what's involved now? How are all these people doing this and keeping safe? And you should have the answers. And this is what your little video should be about. How to sell your home in the world of the coronavirus and keep your family safe. Click here to see two and a half minutes of what you need to know, right? So you just yep. break it down and you promote that. And that is, that is literally being searched right now on YouTube. Information about selling and buying homes in the world of the coronavirus because people want answers. And they're going to find it. So it, 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 if it's in your, if they're in your database, you owe, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your family, you owe it to your customers to go ahead and call through. Because when you did activity with me, I just thought, well, maybe somebody just has a misconception that it can't be done right now. I can't go looking for houses. There's nothing really coming on. There's garbage out there. And you're going to just show me that, hey, it's happening and evidence that it's happening. And you might, have, you might have me in May. It was the same thing in the big collapse. People were looking at, here's what I owe. Here's what the market value appears to be that I can find online. I'm upside down. I can't sell my house. I don't have that money. And then they would get a message from us upside down. There's a thing called a short sale. Find out all the details here. You actually can sell your home and not have to bring money to the closing. It's the same mindset thing, right? People don't You're going know they don't know you're going to the market rather than the market finding you. You're just calling it out. Here's what it is. Boom. You just said upside Boom. down. I got the solution for you. Yep. So they should spend an hour in the morning from eight to nine or nine 30 closing out their A's and B's. And this will roll into April into May, right? You keep one or two months ahead. And then around nine or nine 30, they should be on the phone to their Mets. And that's a different phone call. The Met call is, Hey, how you doing, Mary Beth? Are you doing okay? Family okay? I hope no one's caught yeah, the yeah. virus. It's, it's awful no. what it's doing, but is everybody yeah. you know safe? You say, yeah. Yeah, we're pretty I good, say, yeah. Good, good. So is everybody okay economically? Has anybody lost a job or is anybody worried financially? A little bit bonuses, but we're okay. Everything's okay? Wonderful, wonderful. I'm so glad to hear this. Is there anything I can do for you? Is there a family member that y'all are delivering meals to that maybe I could help you a day or two a week? Deliver a meal, anything I can do to help you? Uh, you know, I, I actually refi, I'm thinking of refining to do some potential investment. Oh, well, that's a pretty exciting idea. Um, could I send you a link to an app, the Keller Williams app? And on that app, you can actually go and search uh, at Keller Mortgage and get a prequal for a refi, no cost, no obligation. And our gift to you is no discount points at all. You remember the last time you bought? Remember the cost for your mortgage? No discount points, no fees, and cash back at closing if it's over $150,000 on your refi. What a deal, huh? At the same time, you can search for your mortgage, for your uh, homeowner's insurance and find out if you can save up to 30%. Keller Williams' gift to you is to trying to save you money on your insurance and on your mortgage, whether you're gonna buy something with the refi or not, doesn't matter, you can save money. Awesome. I love it. I love everything you're saying. Saving me Good. money during this time. Absolutely. Send it over. Great. So I also want to send you a list of restaurants that are doing carry out and delivery as well as their hours. And I want to send you uh, the list of the uh, drug stores in our area that are also open 24 hours a day. So you can get that if you need it. Uh, the last thing I'd ask you is keep in mind what we're talking about here. There are people that are going to be challenged, people that are going to be afraid. And some of this is going to be about literally staying afloat financially, and they're thinking about things they're hearing about, like not paying your mortgage payment. If you hear of that, some of your friends, coworkers are chatting with you online about 
I think I'm going to do that forbearance thing. Please give me their information and tell them I'm going to contact them because some of these things seem like they're a good thing to do, but they actually can get people into trouble. So I want to be a consultant to help your friends and family members make really good decisions. Would you do that for me? Absolutely. I, yeah. I thought that was a good thing though. We don't have to pay our mortgage. You know what? It doesn't mean you don't owe the money, which means you can get into deeper trouble down the road. So people need to be careful about just doing the quick and easy dirty thing that looks good, but maybe it's not so good. So uh, I'd love to help your friends and family members. Thank you. So anyway, here's the point. That's going to yep. generate leads and that's what you start adding into your new pipeline. So you're going to get new leads, put those into your pipeline. And that's what they ought to be doing three hours, three and a half hours in the morning. A's and B's and then met database. And in the afternoon, it's appointments, doing presentations to buyers and sellers through Zoom or Google or whatever you want to do, but doing consultations and at least an hour working on technology, videos, command, running campaigns, etc. Now, now you have the chance to take advantage of this interruption. Because when you look at growth, just from an E to P point of view, forget everything that's going on. When you think about growth, growth is always about breaking through a ceiling and breaking through a ceiling is always about doing more of something you're already doing, stop doing something you're doing and add something you're not doing. Growth is always about those three things. So what happened to us was we had a fourth stop we stopped meeting buyers and sellers on the street. We stopped, it's, it's done, stop, it's hard stop, which gives you a lot of time to add something you're not doing. And the thing that agents should be adding is more conversations, which is something they're already doing, but they should be doing more conversations than they've ever done. And then they should be doing command. All these people have been playing with it. I, I'm gonna wait till it's perfect. Would you just shut up? <laughs> with command just get on it you don't like change you don't like technology own it it's victim talk right just get on it and then they should be doing videos and if agents would take advantage of this time where they can actually do that have a lot of conversations and get engaged in command at a high level and make videos that can change their business right gene i heard um two things that i just wanted to reiterate 2,000 viewers at a virtual open house. I don't know anyone who's ever had 2,000 guests walk through the door of an open house. So that is huge. If Everyone should be taking advantage of that. I mean, if that's not proof enough, I, I don't know what is. Yeah. And the other thing that you mentioned was asking your Mets, do you know anybody who is talking about and utilizing any of this forbearance um, stuff or not, because not paying your mortgage for three months sounds like, sounds like it could really help someone get out of the financial turmoil that they're in. And yet refinancing their mortgage could actually give them those months, right? Because you're not gonna pay a mortgage payment in the month you refi, you're not gonna pay it the following month. Plus, um, no points and, and the things that we do where you can actually get some cash back. That's you might right. actually get those three months without doing the forbearance and pushing off payments and actually perhaps even lowering what your mortgage payment is. So offering that, that's, that's really great. I hadn't actually thought to ask people, if you hear of anyone thinking about doing this, let me know so I could give them advice. But that's, that's amazing. Thank you for that. Yeah. We have some people on the chat. They said they refied. I have another person on the chat said that they also bought a house for a hundred thousand under um, value in 2006 in Florida. So they took advantage of that short sale opportunity. So we have some evidence on that. And um, I think uh, Jean really touched on what the new agents could do. Uh, I'd like to move into a little bit about his success in hiring, finding talent and what um, a shift in the pro you know, talk to us about career visioning. I know you're a master of that. And during a shift, does it change at all? Knowing that the cost of a, a bad hire could be even more significant. Are you in the process of hiring 
or adjusting staff right now? And oh, yeah. what does that look like? Yeah, yeah, we're hiring right now, but we have we have a pretty good sized organization now, so we're hiring all the time, basically. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've got 800 plus people across North Florida, and we've got about 40 people that are working in our organizations. And that's not including my team and the title businesses. So uh, we're hiring steadily. The good news, and it's only the good news in terms of hiring, is that with what's going on, you have a lot of people out of work. I mean, 5 million plus this week alone filed for unemployment benefits. So we could get as much as the latest projection I saw is 17% of the workforce could be out of work. Now, again, from a hiring point of view, <clears throat> one of the biggest challenges of the last two or three years is a very tight job market, meaning there were so many people working, there are very few people looking for work, and it made it really hard. You had to, you had to end up going and hunting people to hire instead of marketing for people. Uh, okay. So you'll have more opportunities now. That's the, that's the good news about what's going on. Um, I think a lot of people also in a downturn like this also rethink what they're doing. So if you have a job that has opportunity lined up in front of it, there are people that have a job that might not have opportunity lined up in front of it. And they'll start to think about that and, and, you know, also start looking, even though they're not out of work. So I think it's a really good opportunity. Yep. That's great. That's great. And how about, you know, I know you're somebody that um, very high accountability in your, in your organization. Does that change at all? And keeping your staff and your leadership teams accountable to their standards? Have, have you had to change in any way with that? Um, talk to the leaders here and, and that are leading teams of leaders. Yeah, well, you gotta make up your mind about what you want. And again, I'll go back to E2P. E2P, uh, if, if your market area, and this is about your board numbers, if your board numbers start to radically fall, and that is happening in some markets, in fact, the thing that's really happening right now I'm hearing around the country is pendings, pendings are off a little bit, but new listings are starting to really fall. Yeah. So if, if the numbers start to really fall uh, in general, then what you've got to realize is your goals, whatever you were trying to hit, might not be in today's market, right? So you got to rethink what it is you want. But I'll go, to, I'll go back to the basic issue here, Mary Beth. And that is, if you've got somebody, let's take a buyer agent. If I want a buyer agent to close three deals a month to four deals a month, and the minimum standard is three deals a month, but they're, they're doing four or five a month, and now this comes along, your goal will be to keep them at three a month instead of hoping to get to four or five a month, or they were doing four or five a month. The goal would always be to hit the minimum standard and do everything you can do to do that. So that is the issue. And uh, what, what Gary says about this is you might have to double down. So that literally means if they're going to have three closings a month, <clears throat> they're going to need to do six appointments to have three closings a month, right? Well, now it might be they need to do 10 or 12 appointments a month just to get three closings. Mm -hmm. I can't fix that, but it ends up being, do you want to make the money? Right. Do they want to make the money? And here's where it's very revealing about your people. When things get really hard, do they continue to work and achieve their goals or not? And the reality is they got to want it more than I want it for them. Absolutely. So when you talk about a minimum standard, that is still the minimum standard. But mm -hmm. the goal was always four or five a month, not three. Three keeps the job. So those people and I need to understand we have to stay on the three. And if we can't stay on the three, then I have to turn and look at admin and say somebody's going to lose their job. Right? And that is true in our market centers, and that is true in our agent businesses, right? You gotta, you gotta work with the market, and you gotta adjust to the reality, but don't give up on your minimum standards, yeah. right? And there's always this talk about goal setting, about how do you set goals? Do you do a, a really big, big, big goal? You know, a big reach, or a medium reach, or a little reach, you know, what's the deal? <laughs> oh, you have a minimum standard, and then a goal. But there's a minimum standard. And that becomes the new goal. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. Yeah. Because when you say it's the minimum standard, that means I break even and make my profit point. And anything above that is super good. Right? <laughs> so the super good goes away, but the minimum standard is what pays the bills and keeps you open. Yeah. Great. Gene, as someone who owns several businesses, multiple market centers, and top team, we do actually have some people that are um, not necessarily in real estate. They might be um, own different businesses related. Is there any advice, more general advice that you could give to business owners going through this challenge right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's tough. Depends on what kind of business you're in. If you have a restaurant, uh, that's brutal. That's a brutal a situation as you could be in, right? Because you have a lot of staff and now they're all laid off and a lot of them are transient. They're going to leave. They're going to float around. So even when you're ready to open up, you ain't got the staff and it's, you know, it's, it's a nightmare. So I wouldn't know where to begin with that kind of a scenario. But in general, I would say it is about guard your money. You know, you got to really look at your money right now. And I know there are both loans and grants that people can get right now, although the, the PPP money is gone, and I think the loan money is probably going to be gone. So uh, try to get that money, but that money was just a short-term solution. That's not going to help you. Uh, a, a lot of larger businesses, it's not going to help them. Yeah. So it is about guard your money. Mm -hmm. This is easy to say from this point of view, but you should have had three to six months reserves built up in an account somewhere and our market centers, that's a standard three months mm -hmm. minimum, six months is the goal. And uh, Rebecca and I've done that. So I'm not worried about carrying the business because we prepared and followed the model. Imagine that. <laughs> and, we've got, and we've got the money. So businesses who don't do that and most small businesses don't have reserve accounts, they're in real trouble. Yeah. And a crisis will reveal your weaknesses just like it reveals your employees' weaknesses by not willing to go their extra mile when that's required just to keep afloat, right? So you, you're going to find out that maybe if you're a small business owner that you didn't know as much about small business as you thought, and, you're, and now you're in trouble. Although what's happening is hard to predict coming. It's just very hard to see this coming, right? So I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm just saying the lack of reserves is going to show you why everybody says you should have reserves. That's so, true. Yeah. yeah. You know, we are seeing some of um, my neighbor specifically has done very well during this and he, he has a restaurant. He went down to four items to keep his, uh, you know, his, his waste down and he's only open a few hours to create catering menus and he, and he takes that and it's a short window of when electric is on and when he has an employee, and he said he's had some of the best profitable percentage, you know, wise weeks. Um, so I think we just have to say, well, what could we do? What could I sell or what could I? And if you can't sell, then what could I do for my community so that when it does open up the pipeline, um, I've got the mind, the mind share for the customers. You know, yeah, some of our local- about that. This is where creativity comes in. If you built yeah. your business properly, meaning it's all models and systems, creativity can allow you to look at your models and your systems and come up with a new strategy. In fact, we have a very popular uh, brewing company, craft beer company here that mm -hmm. has shifted gears because all of their customers, the bars and all, they're not buying, right? They shifted gears and they started making hand sanitizer because after all, what they do is they brew alcohol. Okay. So they shifted their process and now they're creating alcohol and putting it in packaged uh, hand sanitizers and they're not trying to shift their industry they're just trying to keep the doors open until they can make beer again right yes, you, you gotta yeah, you gotta figure it out for sure so uh, that is the blessing and the curse of being an entrepreneur you you can do really really well uh but it's not really going to be a big bailout for you if you get into trouble yeah that's what being an entrepreneur is right yeah yeah, yeah. You want the reward, you got to take the risk, right? That's it. The calculated girl. risk. Calculated yeah. risks. Yes. Well, you try to mitigate risk. Every business should be clear about what their risk is, and you try to mitigate risk as much as you can. You can't get rid of it. All you right. simply can't get rid of it. But if you mitigate risk, meaning have strategic decisions you make that are gauged to buffer you against those risks that you know are out there. If you do that, then you'll be like six months reserve is a mitigating risk, right? Mm. 
Yep. So you so so you keep you. This is off the off the script, but um, you got me thinking. Six months reserve. So we do you think we'll see some market centers come up as uh, as potential opportunities coming out of this, and 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 business opportunities, and, and maybe small independent brokerages. Well, sure. It's not it's not market centers. It's just businesses. They're going to be businesses. restaurants that can be bought very cheaply because there people don't have money, and it's still sitting there. It's got all the equipment. It's got all the everything. So if you can, yeah. you can go in there, and probably renegotiate with the landlord and get that down. Uh, this is when entrepreneurs strike. This is when agents should take market share. This is this is the reality of it. I mean, as bad as it all looks to everybody, just step back one minute and look at my God, Amazon. Jeff Bezos couldn't dream of a windfall as big as this windfall. I mean, he already <laughs> hired 140,000 people and he's advertising for 70,000 more people. He's selling so much right now. He's saying, I can only deliver certain core goods because I can't, I, we don't have the ability to do that. So he's focusing on food and essentials, yeah. no fluff. I mean, my God, so he's, he's getting rich. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's going on. But at the same time, there are other businesses. And yes, I do believe because it's all businesses. There are small brokerages that could either be a fold in candidate or a mm -hmm. low purchase option. Right. Pull them in right now. I mean, I look at our big competitors. Oh, my gosh. Really? Oh, my God is right. Realogy. Yeah. The head of the whole company cut his pay by 90 percent and all of his direct reports got 50 percent pay cuts. Mm hmm. Compass, laying off staff. Yep. Right. Mon money's running out. Mm -hmm. Redfin, forty percent of the agents furloughed. Fancy word for fired. <laughs> 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 All uh, again, everything is being revealed. Weaknesses are being revealed in the downturn. The fact about realages is they're not a profitable company. They owe too much debt service and they're drowning. So the top leadership teams have to give up their income. Ooh, what a model. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We, uh, in, really in New important. Jersey, we have um, the president of CB is uh, retiring early, June 1. Yeah. So that, sh that will change the, you know, the culture, obviously, when leadership yeah. changes, all these shifts, we just got to, you know, be there to offer support for everyone, right? And, and share them what we, what we know. So... Um, Jewel, I kind of think we went over that. We did about the financial. So, yeah. Um, do Am you I have too fast? No, you're great. Oh, you're, great. you're amazing. <laughs> no, you're awesome. Um, and we did share some scripts. Is there any one script that you feel that everyone should be using right now that maybe you haven't shared? Give them a nugget of gold. Gene well, I, I do believe, I already told you what I think. You should be closing out your A's and B's. So the script is very simple. Are we still on? Are you going to sell and buy in April? It's yep. very to the point because yep. this is what they told you. And maybe you followed up in February and reconfirmed it. If you did it right, you stayed in touch and followed up. And all of a sudden you're in the month and you haven't heard from them. You should realize they're probably worried and not sure what to do. And you better be proactive about that. Yeah. And you better have some collateral information. I'll, I'll share some stuff. And this is actually a whole bunch of, uh, of scripts, if you really look at it here. Right. So this stuff here is... So these you are three fancy separate... fancy on the technology. Yeah, these are three separate pieces. So the virtual home buying program over here on the left, just all about the steps in yep. the middle. Are you in the market? How this could affect you? That's another look at the same thing. On the right side, I don't know if you can see it or not, is how to move when you're moving, loading up your stuff and moving, how to be oh, safe. Okay. There's a couple more. Open house, when you can do them. These are precautions that we take. Uh, house showings, if you're a seller, if you're a buyer, the steps we take to protect you. All of these materials are your scripts. You know, the, the, sh the short script is, if you and Mary are still thinking about doing the move, I've got some materials I want to send you so you can read about safety, how we mitigate risk in terms of the virus. And I want to send those to you and I'll follow up. Should I call back this evening or tomorrow morning and see if y'all have any questions and let's make up our minds. Let's either do it or let's move you to a later date. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that's pretty straightforward. I don't think that's... Um, yeah. Anything complicated. 
And uh, Jean, looking at those, you know, when you had said everybody should be doing video, I mean, I look at those pieces you just showed and you could take, you could make one or two videos from each piece right there. Perfect. With, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So exactly. Great. And I'll send those I mean, to you and you can do with them what you want. And if you've adopted command at a high level, you can yeah. just slide those into command yeah. and pull out our logo and put in your logo and you're done. Yep. That's right. Perfect. You'll owe me That's royalties, right. but other than that, it's <laughs> small price, small price. Just small price. kidding, JK. Just kidding. JK. So we can't wait to have you come physically back to New Jersey. We had planned for you to come in May and doesn't look like we're going to be able to do that, but as soon as we can, we will. Can you share with us what are some of the things you're listening to, reading? Uh, if Rebecca, what, what are you doing to keep your mindset good? Well, I think, I think or, organizationally, and y'all are, y'all are epitomizing this organizationally. Uh, we don't have it in CV, but back in recruit select, uh, we had a section in there called, uh, organizational needs assessments. And I think right now, um, I've been, I've been rereading a lot of stuff that's applicable to where we're at and, if you look at the organizational needs assessments, we're at level one. And level one is where leadership needs to be present on a daily basis. And what the leader needs to do is have a great clarity about what's going on and then have a plan on moving forward based on what's going on. And I think that simple vision today is, and we already discussed it, so forgive me, but the virus is a wave that's going to end and then there'll be an economy that's been crippled because of the virus, and then we'll have that to deal with. So what is what is the next three or four months, five months look like, however long it is, what does that look like? And then what does it look like after that? And you gotta have a plan for that. And if you if you have clarity on that, then it needs to be on your training calendar. So like mm -hmm. right now in market centers, the training calendar should be full of learn how to do the digital listing appointment learn how to do the digital buyer consultation. And it may seem simple to a lot of people that are tech savvy, but it's not most agents. How do I send an invite? How do I open? How do I share a graph or chart and not look all bumbly and yada, 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 right? So we need to teach people how to do this. They simply don't know how to do it. And yet it's really not complicated. So right. that's all over your calendar. Well, uh, we just saw you do it, right? With the yeah. share screen. Yeah, and I was terrible. Look at you yeah. getting all tech savvy. <laughs> <laughs> so Old it's the how to on new trick. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so it's the how to on digital presentations. Yeah. So my point is, I, I'm reading stuff that's all about our situation and what we're in. I, I went back and read a paper on epidemics and how long they last and what. I mean, you know, it's not any one thing I'm trying to read. I don't need a mindset thing for myself. I, like you said in your intro, I've lived through enough of these. I know there's business to be done in it and after it. I'm not worried about business. I'm worried about what's really going on and how are we going to do business? Meaning what is the market of the moment and how do we get there? And all I had to hear was about the incredible viewership on YouTube and then the number of people that are watching virtual open houses to know buyers and sellers are sitting there online gobbling up real estate videos. Yeah. And that's, that is the market of the moment. So it's reading newspapers, it's reading, you know, things related to the scenarios that we're in, like about epidemics, like about video, what's going on with YouTube. I think it's about here and now, you know, any, any book that's printed literally is not addressing where we are. Yeah. There's not a book on this. There are books on a lot of things similar to this, but there's not a book on this. Right. Thank you. I think as leaders, we have to look at where we are with a clear eye and what is needed and then go find the resources. That's to right. provide them. Mary Beth, we have one question um, that they would specifically like Jean to answer. And in a we, you have, and I have talked about our opinions on it and what we're seeing in our market centers outside of this. Um, but Jean, do you feel that people are actually out there buying virtual without seeing the properties oh well, we're doing it and the people who say that's not happening don't don't think clearly about the industry this has been happening all along well Thank we've you. done a ton of corporate reload work and they come to town and they interview for the job and they want to be taken on a chamber of commerce tour 
and figure out what part of town they want to live in and then look <laughs> totally. at some sample properties, right? They look at sample properties and then they go back home and yeah. then they negotiate the job offer and then they take the job. And from that point on, they literally will look at properties only in that neighborhood that we send them and they'll ask for more photos or they'll ask for de detailed videos and they will pick a home and they will buy it sight unseen. Yep. Because they know it's where they want, it's the money's right, they love what they see in it, and they'll buy it. People buy new construction all the time, all the yep. time. The house doesn't okay. exist. Yeah, no picture. And it's the most expensive kind of house to buy, and they'll buy it, and there's nothing to look at. Yep. Just some charts and plans. Well, we can give you videos of the house. That's better than the charts and the plans, and people will buy a home based on charts and plans. Is that true? Yep. Yeah, I heard you say that the other day, and I thought that is brilliant, like to allow a buyer to realize that this has been going on forever with new construction was just a major aha for me. Yeah, people are people have been buying houses without walking through them for a long time. It's nothing, nothing new about it. And I love this, this phrase, if you can buy, if you can find a spouse online, you can buy a house online. Yep. Which is so true. Yeah. And both will last about seven years. <laughs> <laughs> Without any upgrades, you know, you can always upgrade and get through that seven year inch. I'm just kidding. Rebecca and I got 35 years plus. Yeah, Godfrey was uh, Godfrey was hoping to see you. He's working, so he was like, Gene. Um, all right. Well, you know, we've taken so much of your time. We, we thank, thank you, you for so much. Yeah, so appreciate you. Um, you poured into us, and we're, we're definitely beyond grateful for everything that you have done over the 16 years. Oh, um, is there anything that we can? do to help you amidst this time no, y'all just everybody listening needs to get out there and apply something you know do something pop a video you can shoot a video on your phone today get something done take action don't sit around worrying for one more minute just get to work just get to work worrying doesn't do squat <laughs> no you're right no offense <laughs> <laughs> Just go, just get it done, get it done. This too will pass. Get prepared for the bounty afterwards by what you do today. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gene. All right. All right, and the rest of you guys, we have Matt Bilheimer, who is right now p pulling our award winner, award winners, our winners. We have two winners that are going to receive the um, new Michael, or Mike um, McCallowitz. Fix This Next book that re releases April 28th. So Matt, would you go ahead and pull the winners and, and um, tell us who will be the lucky recipients of those books? Yes, absolutely. Thank uh, you. And thank you first, all for um, you know being here and finding value in what we're doing. And again, we're always open to your suggestions. We're here to serve you. Well, Let's and the people that we're picking are people who invited 10 people to like your Facebook page, Leading Through Crisis, uh, Mary Beth Olive and Julie Costa. We're already mm -hmm. over 300 uh, people on the page over just a couple weeks. Okay. So uh, awesome job. Uh, the first person who I picked is Carrie Lavelle. Woo, awesome. Carrie. Carrie. And I believe I saw her on this, on this uh, yeah. chat. So congratulations, Carrie. Super and the other person that I have selected or picked out of the hat is... Linda Lee Scarlett. Great. Linda. Great. Congratulations, Linda. All right. Well, thank you, Matt. Thanks, Jean. Thank you, Mary Beth. Thank I you, will uh, see you next Tuesday. <laughs> All right. Thank see you, Jean. Bye, everyone.